We are still two and a half months away from seeing a full blown version of the new Seahawks offense in action on week one, but we are starting to piece together more of what it could look like. I'm Jen Mueller with your Seahawks Daily. Of course, when you talk about a Shane Waldron offense, you're going to draw comparisons to what the Rams offense looked like when he was on the staff. But as we've heard from players, including former Ram Gerald Everett, things are going to look different in Seattle. A good bit of it, but I would say uh, most of it I understand. You know, so I've been in it for a couple years, so just being able to be that versatile player and line up anywhere and you know, be anything in the offense or and for the team. So, you know, just trying to be that teacher and be that guy on the field to, you know, who they expect me to be. The passing game gets a lot of attention, but the offense is designed to be balanced. As a point of comparison, the 2020 Rams averaged 126 rushing yards a game. The Seahawks averaged 123. Fans shouldn't be surprised how heavily the running backs play into the scheme. Pete Carroll obviously preaches to you guys quite a bit that we're going to run the football. And uh, so there's a lot of carryover in that. You know, we take a tremendous amount of pride in coming out and being dominant on the run game. But um, there is some newness. There is some of that Shane offense that you guys will see. I don't want to give anything away for the newness that uh, you guys will see on Sundays. But uh, you're going to see a lot more style. Um, a lot more, you know, explosiveness and, you know, maybe some quick game here or there. The offense is built on tempo. We've seen the Hawks utilize a no huddle quick game in the past, but not out of a system that requires this much communication. The tempo fancy might not look different, but it will definitely sound different for players on the field. I don't think it's going to be as different, but like I said, there's there's a, a lot of plays that we have to do tempo. So you just got to be able to listen clearly because you can easily get caught up in hearing the wrong thing. And so when it comes to us as an offense, if there's anything that I think we need to know is we have to be able to communicate. But if there's anything that I'm learning when it comes to this offense is the more and more that you communicate and the more and more that you talk, the more and more that you guys are going to be on the same page and successful. According to Tyler Lockett, the new offense will also be looking to utilize shorter routes that makes it easier to take whatever the defense gives them. It should also increase the yards after catch. Using again the 2020 Rams as a point of comparison, consider that yards after the catch accounted for more than half of the total yards gained by Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, the Rams' top two receivers, while the yards after catch accounted for about a third of the total yards gained by Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. The deep routes aren't going away, and there's no crazy new route tree. There are more options for wideouts in this scheme. With the offense that Shane brings in, I think it brings us more freedom more freedom to kind of be able to be the receivers that we can be. We got um, free range to do a lot of stuff, not saying that we could just go out there and do whatever we want, but the more and more sophisticated that you become in this offense, the more you're able to understand how you can switch your feet, how not to switch your feet, how to add an extra step, how not to add an extra step, rather than always just having to get to a certain point at this certain amount of time, you kind of have free range to play with it a little bit. At the end of the day, Tyler Lockett sums it up like this. Shane Waldron is great at identifying individual strengths and then utilizing them, which according to Lockett means the sky's the limit when we do see this offense in week one.